going to start by just setting the stage a little bit. So I'd like to ask you to tell us about how you ended up in one of these tests, when it was, where it was. Kind of tell us a little bit about that to start with. We did not volunteer for this, obviously. We were at Camp Irwin, and they said we were going to see an atomic bomb. I was driving the Jeep from Camp Irwin to Yucca Flats, Nevada, and that's how I got there. And when was this? The bomb went off May 5th. We were there approximately 21 days, and every day we went, I, I mentioned it earlier that we had a tanker truck to brought in water so we could shower every day. And this test is part of the teapot operation. I, there were 14 tests in that. And what was the name of the one that you participated in? I was in Apple II. Was it from a tower or was it? It's a 500-foot five foot tower. OK. And could you describe for us what you where you were, how close you were, what you saw, um, what that was like. Needless to say, we were not in trenches. We were lying down like so. And when the bomb went off, we saw a bright light, even though our eyes were shut, we could see the bomb. Then they said, run up the hill. We ran up the hill, the shockwave knocked us all down. But we were out there in the open. And did you see the actual mushroom cloud, or that was when you had your eyes hidden? We could still see it. Could see it? And, mm -hmm. and did you see different colors? No, I did not. I just saw a white color. I did not see various colors. Okay. And about how many people were there with you, do you think? Well, I know our 723rd Tank Battalion all were there and everyone participated. The tanks, after the bomb went off, they rolled toward ground zero. So you were not in a tank, but you ran towards ground zero. No, I was zero. a battalion mail clerk. I didn't have to do that. Well, what we're seeing here is a map of uh, where this was, mm -hmm. and also a map of all the different tests that were part of Teapot. Apple II is on the upper left-hand side, the second one down. Okay, and one of the unique kind of features of, of this test was the survival town. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk a little bit about what survival town was like before the test and then what it was like after the test? No problem. The test, we saw a brand new car in the garage prior to the bomb going off <clears throat> and everyone wanted to get that car and drive it away because they knew it would be not there when we got out. So. They had food. They wanted to see what damage would be done to the food particles. They wanted to see individuals were placed at various sites around the bomb. And so consequently, it was a real town, but no one there. And when the bomb went off afterward, there was nothing left. It was just wiped out, including our car. <laughs> I missed out on my time to get the car. And I understand that for this particular test, um, they actually set up for it twice. And the first time they set up, um, want to tell us what happened there about the location? Well, the night before, they had us on the wrong side of the mountain. If the bomb would have went off then, We'd all been killed. But in the sovereignty of God, he spared us. So we went May 5th. We, as I mentioned earlier, we were not in a trench. We were lying down. Uh, they put your arms like so, and that's when it went off. And then they said, run up the hill. The shockwave knocked us all down. And then they marched you back to the camp, correct? <laughs> They didn't, I had, remember, I had to ride the Jeep, drove it. So we drove it back the Jeep. The tanks, obviously, they went back. 
And when you got back to the camp, what happened? They threw mustard gas at us. Okay, so um, do you want to share with us a little bit of what that experience was like? Um, mustard gas, of course, was very caustic to mm -hmm. the lungs. Um, do you feel like you had damage from that, that your friends who were there had damage from that and from the nuclear blast? Well, we lost our first two children and I think it came from the bomb. There's no way we could prove it, obviously. But I know that out of the whole task force, the last time I heard, there was only 27 of us still alive. And how many were there to begin with? In the excess of 5,000, perhaps. So that's a, a very great proportion of people who have passed away. Mm -hmm. did, do you, did you stay in touch with them? Do you know if many of them passed away very young? No, I, I haven't touched, talked to anybody from them. I, a fellow from Texas called me once about it, but he didn't elaborate on any of that. And did they take any precautions to protect you from the radiation or from no. the mustard gas? No. We had fatigues. And they dusted this and said, move out, and that was it. So the, you kept the same fat, fatigues afterwards? They yeah. did not uh, wash them or destroy <laughs> them? Or... Well, we, we washed them eventually, yeah. This is uh, a record of your exposure. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody ever provided any compensation from the government? No, or I never got a dime, still haven't. And we know that this um, bomb was uh, significantly larger than Her the Hiroshima bomb. There is a chart that shows you Her Her Hiroshima was on the left, right here, 12. Ours was 29, two and a half times more. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you, how you got into the Army in the first place and um, how you ended up at this um, situation? When was, we said it's 1955 is the test. Mm -hmm. Okay, when did you go into the Army? January the 8th, 1954. Okay. I was at work. My sister called me and started laughing. She says, you got drafted. I said, Francis, that's not funny. <laughs> but it, well, that's when I went, January the 8th, 54 until November 18th, 1955. I got out to go to the college two months early. And were you in the United States the entire time, or did you? Yes, I was stationed at Camp Irwin, which is in the middle of the Mojave Desert, 37 miles from Barstow. And other than this test, what were some of the other activities that you participated in? Well, I was on the post baseball team. So I got to play baseball at Camp Irwin. And and there were 5,000, maybe 7,000 people in your group. How many people were at Camp Irwin altogether? Do you oh know? my God, I have no idea. How many people were on the, uh, how many baseball teams were there? One. <laughs> and we, we played the Barstow Marines, which are our big rival. And then we played the Air Force bases, George, Edwards, and Norton and then Ridgecrest Navy, and that was in, and Camp Irwin was in the league. And did you have, so you participated in one of these tests. Did other people in, um, that you knew participate in, the, in different tests um, or in more than one test? I don't recall them in going any further unless they stayed in the Army. There was just the one test that we were exposed to. Um, were you surprised when you read the description of uh, the test that was uh, a walk across the desert, a march across the d desert, um, and then a march ba back and a chemical warfare without any detail? Were you surprised by that? Yes, I was. And if you were to describe that same overall scenario, what kinds of words would you have used? I wouldn't have done it that way. 
as I mentioned to you, we were lying down. And one of the officers, uh, as a note on what he did, he was in a trench. And he was protected by being in the trench because the shockwave would go over it. And he said he had no after effects. But I believe we had several after effects. And, and can you describe, you described how, what it looked like. Can you describe the feeling of it, of the shockwave? Like an earthquake. Like an earthquake, mm. a big earthquake. A big one, <laughs> very big one. So since we're here in California, probably everybody is. Everyone's used to an earthquake. Familiar. Okay, are there any other specific things that you would like to discuss and make sure that are recorded? I just would think that everyone in our country would understand that this bomb apparently approved a lot of things. What a tank could handle the radiation. I was always telling my son, there was a German railroad gun that sat there, huge, World War I. The bomb went off, put it on its back, and that was how devastated it was. And you couldn't pick that up with a, a tank to move it, but the bomb did. And so consequently, I never want to see it again, the bomb. Because you don't realize, as a young person, it's so easy to understand, well, there's no big deal. It is a big deal. And there's after effects. But no one ever talks about that. You never hear anything about the atomic bomb anymore. So, and they're going to do more testing. So this was an above ground test, of course. Yes. The, um, 500 foot tower. And I think it was just a few years later when they banned the above ground tests, mm -hmm. maybe about five or seven years later. Mm -hmm. um, but then of course there were still underground tests and then the tests were banned completely. Um, are you thinking that they are going to go back to doing some live testing? Yes, sir. I sure believe that. I want to thank you very much for talking with us today and for your service to our country and for sharing your experiences. Um, if any of the students have questions, we have a little bit of time. We'll be glad to um, try and answer them. Yes. Um, do you think there would ever be a reason to use the atomic bomb again? Only in retaliation if somebody dropped one here. But not to just arbitrarily do it on our own. That wouldn't be the right way to do it. From what I heard about this testing, it was kind of kept secret. So I was wondering why they didn't better protect the soldiers from radiation because like the after effects, if they're recorded. So. I don't hear that. The, the question is that, it, that she had heard that the testing was kept secret, and she wondered, in that case, why they did not um, better protect the soldiers from radiation, and also about keeping the record secret. The fact that you actually have the record of how much radiation you received, is, does that sum up your question? <laughs> so the fact that you actually have the record of how much radiation you received is a little surprising, and I agree with that, um, that it is a little surprising. Did everybody get those? Yes. Did you have to go ask for them, or they just handed no, them out? No, we had to ask for them. And we were told that most of our records were destroyed in a fire in St. Louis, Missouri. Well, I'm from Los Angeles. I don't know how my records got to St. Louis. <laughs> but that's what happened. Yes. Um, what was your reaction when you heard about Hiroshima and the bomb being dropped there? So let me repeat that question. What was your reaction when you heard about Hiroshima and the bomb dropped there? Well, remember, in 1945, I was very, very young. I was only 14. So it ended the war. They dropped two in Japan. 
but remember Pearl Harbor, and we should remember that as well. So it got the war over, and that was the main thrust of the whole bomb. Yes. Uh, what were the immediate effects of the radiation? On, on me? So let's repeat that question also so everybody could hear it. What were the immediate effects of the radiation? Well, all I can say is we lost two children, and I can't say it was directly from the bomb, but that was what we had. Both my kids have asthma extremely bad, and there is, I believe in one of these reports, it says that was one of the side effects, the bronchial asthma and bronchial problems. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, how much did you know about the bomb and its effects before you experienced the test, and did it exceed your, um, your expectation of how powerful it was going to be? I had no expectations as what the bomb was like or anything about it because when you're in the service, they don't tell you things like that. They just said, you're going. I say we were guinea pigs because no one knew what was going to happen to us. Did and that you, was scary. That was scary? Yeah. And did you even know that they were going to set off an atomic bomb? Did they tell you that part? Only when we got the Yucca Flats. And then I didn't know about the mustard yet. Do we went back to camp early? But of course, you were old enough to have seen the aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So mm -hmm. you had some idea when they did tell you of, of what that might mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sure did. Yes, ma'am. Um, so from your experience um, with like the power of the bomb, do you think if we were to have like a nuclear war, like, could it destroy, like, the world? It would destroy whole towns. And you don't know how many people would be killed on it. It was, it's something that I'd never want to see again. It was so devastating. And there were no people that were affected that day that were killed. But in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there was a number, over 100,000 had been killed in the two bombs. But I don't want to ever see it again. Those are good questions, really good. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. What other things have you done in relation to this, maybe to, um, to share your story? I've never shared it. It's something that I don't look forward to the, because it's scary to think about that. And the, North Korea is testing it right now, atomic bombs. And it would be awful if they dropped one here. And I'd hate to think that it'd start World War III. Tim? Yes. You described that there wasn't any protector. Can you describe to them what the teeths are and then what, after you experienced the bomb, then you said that they brushed you off. Was, can you elaborate a little bit about that whole effect right after directly? Could you, you walk through and then after seeing all this, describe what, what they did to, uh, before you went back to the base? Well, we got dusted off. Like you'd get a brush and it'd dust you off and say, all right, move out. And that was it. We had no protection, zero. Uh, you see these pictures where they're wearing gargles or they're in a, a trench? We had none of that. We didn't have the goggles either. So then when you said with your fatigues, did you wear your fatigues that day, the next day? Oh, yeah. And, and how did you go ahead and clean your fatigues? How did you do it? Wash. Was there there was no laundromats out there, Tim. So, did, so you had to take them home? I probably took them home and have my sister or my mother wash them. And uh, Max, can you just elaborate a little more? So you saw you saw the bomb, and then afterwards they took you for a march, right? It, that we walked through Ground Zero. So can you just explain a little bit more what you saw 
you know, we have some pictures here of some of the things um, in the town, the survival town. But it, it, can you explain a little bit more what you saw as you're walk, walking through? Well, remember, we saw the beginning. Uh, this mock town was all set up. As I mentioned to you earlier, I'd like to have that Ford out of the garage. <laughs> but needless to say, it was destroyed. And it was afterward, it was just nothing there. Wiped out. So you walked through the town before. Mm -hmm. Then the, you went and lay down on the ground, no trenches, nothing. Bomb goes off. How soon after that did you walk back through the town? Oh, my gosh. Not very long, probably. When they said it was okay to walk through, maybe an hour or two. I, I can't tell you the exact time out now. And how far away was that from where you were during the actual bomb blast itself? I'd say, well, we tried to figure it out about two miles. So not very far and no. not very long. No. Does anybody have any other questions? Yes. Would you want uh, nuclear weaponry to be banned, or should we keep? Yes. You're going to be banned. I don't think we'll ever see that. There's too many countries that want to fight us because they don't like our way of living in the Christian nation. So they possibly would do it again. Yes. They wanted to see what would happen to our tank battalion. The damage would be done. Would it destroy the tank? Also, we were guinea pigs. They want to know what to do to the human beings. So I did not volunteer. Trust me, I would never volunteer for that. But they had to figure out what was going to happen if they got into a war where the enemy would use an atomic bomb on us. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it's hard to understand today that how, how little they knew, but also how they just assumed that they could do these tests and find out the information that they were looking for. And there was, I'm again, very surprised that you got those radiation results because there was not a lot of that going on. Um, and there was not in the public very good understanding, mm -hmm. I think, of what the possible effects could be. And as Max said, you could never prove. We get radiation all the time, so you could not make that connection. Um, but I think that you told me how many people are still alive that were there with you. Mm -hmm. you share that. 27. Out of five to I think 7, it was 000. about five to 7,000, yeah. yeah. So you can see that there's a correlation, at least, um, in what happened then. I think only the grace of God is why I'm still here. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever receive any special medical treatment, like even in the future after this? No, not really. Just assume that was part of getting old. Okay, I want to thank everybody um, for participating. And thank you again, Max. It's been a great pleasure talking with you thank today. Thank you very much. I enjoyed this, our favorite school. My kids went here too. Thank you.